Maggio here from McFadden Sales, and today we're going to be going over the ESP Original Snapper CTM in Tiger's Eye Sunburst Finish. At the end of 2022, this guitar streets for $52.99, is made in Japan, and comes with a case. Now, when I say this guitar is made in Japan, it's not made on assembly line. These guitars are built one by one by ESP's master luthiers in Japan. Now let's move on to the specifics of this model. So this guitar weighs 8.26 pounds, which puts it firmly in our welterweight category. And the thickness at the input jack is 46 and a half millimeters. Now we have a traditional strap pin that goes into a swamp ash body. That swamp ash body has a flamed maple cap on it. When they finish this flame maple cap, what the luthiers do is they actually tape off the corner here and that's how they create this natural binding. It's actually part of the top. Up from there, we have the ESP Flicker 3 bridge. Now, this is a bridge that ESP makes themselves, and it kind of harkens back to their roots as an aftermarket hot rodder of guitars. So if you're not familiar with ESP and their roots, they started in the early 80s in New York City supplying artists with different parts for their guitars that they weren't happy with how they came stock. So bridges, things like that, and then it moved on from there. So the Flicker 3 is a very good example of that where it's almost overbuilt to a certain point, but it is still very sleek, very comfortable to play. There's no sharp edges to it. If you flip it around and look at where the strings come through here, there's a huge brass block back there, which is definitely gonna help with tone and sustain and those types of things. It really, it really calls on their past and kind of shows that they, they really haven't forgot who they are or how they started. Up from the Flicker 3 bridge, this guitar is loaded with Seymour Duncan pickups from the factory. So you have a vintage hot stack in the neck and in the middle, and then you have a custom hybrid 59 in the bridge. Now the electronics on this guitar can be intimidating because there are so many different options here. So let's go through them one by one so you know exactly what they do. Your volume knob, self-explanatory, there's nothing different there. Moving on to the tone knob, the tone knob will allow you to select two different capacity values. So when the knob is pushed in, that's your normal standard capacity value. Your guitar is gonna sound just like it always would. Now when you push it out, it's gonna raise the capacity value. When you raise the capacity value, what happens is you darken up your tone a little bit. It's very subtle, but it's one of those things that maybe you wanna play in the darker position and then pop it on for maybe a lead or something like that to cut through. It's just another tonal option. Now your five-way pickup selector, that's standard. However, when you take this mini switch and flip it up, your second and your fourth position change. So your second position with the mini switch up is going to give you a single coil on the bridge and your neck pickup. When you go into the fourth position, what you get is single coil bridge, middle and neck. That's my favorite for clean playing. Those pickups are mounted on a three-ply vintage marine pearl pickguard. And one nice thing that ESP does, and I wish more manufacturers did this, is they cut away the plastic right here. So when you peel this off your pickguard, you're not dealing with all the little scraps and stuff hanging out underneath the bolts over here. Just a nice little touch. Onto the back of the body, you have a belly relief here, you have a smooth heel joint, and I wanna call out specifically this neck plate. Now. The custom shop could have went with something just normal, just a stainless steel plate, chrome, maybe matte finish, but they applied a nice knurling, almost a matte three-dimensional finish to it. And again, it's just one of those things that kind of kicks it up a notch. One other thing on the back of this guitar is it appears to be black on camera. The back of this guitar is not black. I would say it's closer to a Mercedes Dolomite brown with a little bit of gold flake in it. Again, it's just one of those things that just kicks it up just a little bit. Now onto the neck. This is a maple neck with a maple fingerboard. Obviously it's bolt on. The profile's thin U and it's 305 millimeter radius. 
The frets on this are medium jumbo, they're not extra jumbo. And one nice little detail is these side markers actually glow in the dark. I took measurements at the neck and at the bone nut were 42.4 millimeters, 47 millimeters at the fifth fret and 52 millimeters at the 12th fret. Onto the headstock, you have ESP and snapper screen printed on here with Electric Sound Products custom guitars. On the back of the headstock, you have ESP original series with the gold world behind it, the serial number, and these are Goto locking tuners with a 16 to one ratio. Now I have a soft spot for this shape guitar as I've said in the past. They fit me right. I grew up playing them. I like that there's no neck dive in it. The weight of this guitar is perfect. I love that it has a little bit of a, an angle here for your elbow. So who's this guitar for? For me, this is the perfect session player guitar because you have all these different tonal options to choose from here. However, also it will work just as great in a setting where you only have one guitar for live and you can't be switching on and off every song because of all those tonal variations. Combine that with the locking tuners and it is a pretty solid choice for live playing guitar. This guitar is also great for someone who's just looking for a performance-based instrument. The 305 millimeter radius with the thin U profile, even with my dopey drummer hands, I can get around on it and it feels right. It's not too thin. There's something substantial to it. Anyway, I love the shape. I love the finish. Every guitar I own is a sunburst finish. So the song you're about to hear was what I pulled this guitar right out, just started playing it, laid down some drums, played some more. It's got kind of a bluesy riff to it a little bit, but it's still heavy. In any case, enjoy. <laughs> 